Hi there, I'm Ryan Chan, CEO and founder of Upkeep. Today, we're tackling a critical topic, the Lockout Tagout Safety Procedure, or simply LOTO. This video will guide you through the importance of Lockout Tagout, its historical context, how it works, and the tools you need to implement it successfully. We'll also share some alarming incidents where the lack of Lockout Tagout had fatal consequences. So stick around, you're about to learn how to make your workplace safer and comply with federal regulations. Lockout tagout is a crucial aspect of industrial processes, especially as technology and machinery have evolved over the years. With more specialized maintenance procedures, there's been an increase in serious incidents involving these high-tech equipment. In fact, servicing powerful, energized systems has been identified as one of the key contributors to injuries and fatalities. Back in 1982, the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI, published its first guidance on lockout, tagout, to provide safety precautions in the maintenance of hazardous energy sources. This eventually developed into a regulation by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, in 1989. So what exactly is lockout, tagout? It refers to safety practices and procedures that ensure dangerous machines are properly shut off and can't unexpectedly release hazardous energy during maintenance activities. OSHA's guidelines cover all sources of energy, including mechanical, electrical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, and thermal. Manufacturing plants typically require maintenance activities for one or a combination of these sources. Lockout tagout, as the name implies, specifies two general approaches to ensure that employees are protected from dangerous equipment during maintenance activities. The first is lockout which physically limits access to certain equipment. The second is tagout, which provides visible warning signs to inform employees of potential hazards. Now, how does lockout tagout work? OSHA, through Title 29 of the Code of Federal Regulations, Part 1910.147, provides standards on the proper maintenance and servicing of equipment that can potentially release hazardous energy. Companies should identify equipment that is required by law to abide by these maintenance standards. This is not only to avoid hefty fines, but more importantly, to ensure the safety of the workers. A robust documentation process is required to ensure all equipment complies with federal regulations on the lockout tagout processes during maintenance activities. The ability to add lockout tagout procedures to the CMMS can significantly improve visibility on the progress of more hazardous tasks. Once equipment with hazardous energy sources are properly identified and maintenance procedures are documented, there are seven general steps that should be accomplished before servicing activities are carried out. First, prepare for shutdown. Second, notify all affected employees of the activities and equipment involved. Third, shut down the equipment. Fourth, isolate the equipment from the hazardous energy source. Fifth, dissipate residual energy. Sixth, apply applicable lockout or tagout devices, and finally seventh, verify that the equipment is properly isolated. Now let's talk about the tools required to perform the lockout tagout procedures. There are two general types. Lockout devices are physical restraints that ensure that a particular equipment is inaccessible or isolated. A basic example is a lock and key. Tagout devices are prominent warning devices that visibly identify an equipment to be potentially hazardous. These can be in the form of signs or symbols attached securely to equipment. More recently, non-physical tools such as specialized software are being utilized to make lockout tagout processes more efficiently performed. Tracking lockout tagout activities through maintenance management software is an advantageous functionality to ensure accurate compliance to standards. The importance of lockout tagout cannot be overstated. Incident reports show that a shocking number of maintenance tragedies could have been prevented by implementing some basic lockout tagout process. For example, in 2012, the tragic demise of a 21-year-old on his first day as a temporary worker could have been prevented if only proper lockout tagout precautions were practiced. A palletizing machine was mistakenly switched on while he was performing cleaning tasks. The promotion of a safety culture in a plant's operations should be kept in mind to safeguard employees from avoidable harm. Seemingly obvious processes can go a long way if performed consistently and consciously. Observing the practice of lockout tagout is a concrete way of making the workplace safer. In conclusion, performing lockout tagout procedures is a way to ensure the safety of workers, particularly from hazardous energy sources. Failure to comply with lockout tagout standards not only causes fines, 
but also potentially causes injuries and even fatalities. Tools such as lockout and tagout devices, as well as available software, should be maximized to make the workplace safer. And that brings us to the end of our video. We've covered the critical importance of lockout tagout procedures, how they work, and the tools you need to implement them successfully. Remember, your safety and the safety of your team is paramount. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative content. For additional resources and tools to help your maintenance and reliability teams be more successful, visit our website at upkeep.com. Thank you for watching.